Hi, my name is Stuart J. Murphy. I'm the author of the Math Start series. Math Start is a series of 63 books that teach mathematical concepts in the context of stories. 21 of those books are for pre-K and K. I'm going to talk a little bit now about how you read a storybook that contains mathematical content to children and how to do that most effectively. And I'm going to use one of the pre-K K books as an example. The book is called Jack the Builder. Now, when you're reading a story to children, of course, it's very helpful if you become familiar with the book yourself beforehand. If you study the book a little bit, read it a few times and think about, okay, what do you find exciting about the story and what do you want to stress? Uh, what, do, what, what do you want to emphasize as you're reading the story to a child? And then when you begin a story, any story, but particularly a story that's a picture book that contains mathematical ideas, it's really important that you start with the cover, the end papers, and the title page. I say that because this is our preface. Those of us who write picture books don't get a preface. And so we have to use those pages and plan those pages to introduce you to the protagonist of the story. In this case, it's Jack. And a little bit about what it's about. I mean, look at the cover. There's Jack. What's he doing? He's got a rocket ship. What's going on in the background? What do you think the story is about? And then you open it up and there are the end papers filled with blocks. And then you move on to the title page and there's Jack building with blocks. Jack the Builder. And then as you go through the story, now you're ready to begin the story, and as you go through it, you have to think about the merger of the math content and the storyline. You know, that's one of the hardest things I do in writing my books, is trying to make sure they become one, that the math doesn't take over because then it may become too workbooky, and then what happens is the story has to keep on moving and keep the child motivated and excited. And so both of those things have to work together and really become one. For example, when Jack has three blocks and he's ready to add two more, he doesn't have to go back and recount the three. He knows he's got three, so he can count on from the three. Three, four, five. And of course, there's a visual model for that. The visual models are very, very important to reference as you're reading the story. And there are the illustrations as well. You know, in a picture book, the text only tells half the story. The pictures tell the other half and they come together to tell the whole story. So it's very important to talk about the illustrations, the artwork as you move along. What's going on here? What's Jack thinking? What do you think he's building? And then you turn the page and you see he's taken his five blocks and he's built a ferry boat out on the sea. Then as you move through the story, it's good to every so often talk about the story, bring up ideas, ask the child what they're thinking, what they might be predicting might be going to happen next. Make it interactive, make it fun. And then when you get to the end of the story, you'll see in this story, Jack is ready to start building all over again. And you need to be ready to start all over again too. You need to be able to start asking a few questions about the story. How did you feel about it? How did Jack feel? How did you feel you could apply it to your life? Have you ever seen anything like this yourself? And then, and then think about that really most important question of all. Would you like to read the story again? Would you like to revisit Jack the Builder and spend a little more time with him? Thank you for listening.